Okay, everybody, can we start your video? Okay, come, let's start your lesson, uh, your video, and we will begin the lesson now. Okay, yep. So I hope you have done your papers already. All right, your item paper one. Okay, come. Uh, so everybody switch on the video quickly. All right, Wen Ray, Jordan, Lee Wen, your K. Okay, and if you haven't done, uh, okay, now for those of you in my groups, uh, if you haven't done, uh, you need to use a green pen to write down. Okay, don't use a blue pen because I'll be giving marks. So when you come for your normal lesson, your regular lesson, you have to bring along your paper one. Okay, you have to submit your paper one. Okay, for those in my groups. Okay, so Yvette, start your video, Lee-Wen. Okay, just wake up. <laughs> your face like very grudgy. You want to wash your face? All right, if you are sleepy, then you wash your face, okay? If you are grudgy. Okay, Jordan style video, Rainer, Janelle, and uh, Karina, Jared. Okay, now the paper today, some of you said that it's quite hard, uh, but you need to expect, you need to get ready, mentally prepared for such paper, right? In your, okay, in your uh, prelim paper. All right, so in your prelim, you may have a hard paper one. So you have to get used to it. You have to be ready, okay, ready mentally. Okay, uh, Michelle, video, Jordan, on the video, Jared. Okay, now we may take more than one hour to go through. Okay, we may, because uh, there are some questions that I would like to take more time to explain. Okay, but if you can't understand later after the lesson, you can stay back, right? Stay back after the lesson, and then we can, you can ask me questions, all right? You can stay back after 9 p.m. Okay, let's start. Okay, let's begin. Okay, now let's look at question one. Okay, question one. Okay, now I, I hope you have done already. Huh? Okay, in... In this number, the digit seven stands for seven times what? So you look at the value of the digit seven, which is 700,000, right? So seven times how many? Seven times 100,000. So your answer will have to be number, number, number four, right? Okay, so quite simple. Okay, question number two, percentage problem. Now, every time you see percentage, ah, what is this percentage talking about? It's talking about his money. All right, generally it's talking about his money, uh, which is all the money, and that is 100%. Okay, and then he had $240 left after he spent on the wallet. So, which means that, yeah, Jordan? Oh, what's cool is that? I found paper one. I found paper one, two, zero, one, nine, right? I found paper one, two, zero, one, nine. Is everybody all? You, you, you gave me two, zero, two, one. Oh. <laughs> okay, okay, then never mind, Jordan. Daddy will, Daddy will just mark the mark the papers for you. You just look at the screen. Okay, the rest of you, you have 2019, the rest of you, all 2019, right? I think, <laughs> okay, never mind, okay? So, the, okay, let's continue. Okay, so Spencer spent 40% on the wallet and had $240 left. So, this is 60%, right? Okay, how do you get 60%? You take 100% minus 40% that is spent, you will get 60% left. Okay, so what do you do? 60%, write your statement. 60% is $240. So can you find how much is the wallet, which is 40%. Okay, now this is paper one. So uh, so what you can do is you find one unit. All right, try to cut the working. All right, don't have too much working. Cut the working. All right, what do you mean by cut the working? Not, uh, reduce your working so they can do faster. So you take $240 and then divide by 60. All right, so you must know how to divide numbers with zeros, take out one zero, here also take out one zero. So you have 20, 24 divided by six, which is, uh, which is how much? Which is $4. So your 1% is $4. So 40% will be 40 times four. So how much is the wallet? The wallet costs $160. Okay, all right. Okay, answer style video, Caleb, Aiden, Abigail. All right, don't let me stop keep telling you, uh, you by now you should be, you should know what I expect of you already. So everyone start your video. Otherwise, uh, I have to remove you from the room. Okay, let's look at question three. Simplify six plus nine R minus two plus two R. Now, if you don't know how to do, you circle. Okay, circle, circle, and circle. And you put the groups with the same kind together. Like for example, what can you put? You put the nine R. Okay, put the nine R together with two R. Put them beside each other. And then how about the six? Okay, put the six together with the minus two. All right, then you can do already. So nine R plus two R is actually 11 R plus six minus two is four. So answer is 11 R plus four. So answer number three. Okay, I'll be going through slowly. Huh? Therefore, Jordan, just revise. Okay, revise as you are looking at the screen. Okay, question four. 
how do you change decimal in hours and minutes? Now, this will come out in your speed, right? In your speed, where you will need to convert the hours into hours and minutes. So if it's a decimal, what do you do? You change it to fraction, which is 1 and 4 over 10. Okay, change it to fraction. And then how to get how many hours and minutes? Make the denominator into a 60. So 10 times 6 and 4 times 6. And you will get 1 hour and 24 minutes. Answer number three. So you have to know how to convert because you'll be doing that for speed problems. Okay, all right. Uh, all right, let's go to the next one, question five. Any question, you can, uh, you can raise your hand. All right, Ms. Tong has time for one question. Okay, one or two questions. Uh, too many questions, we will wait until the end of the lesson. What is the digit in the tens place in the sum of 44.2 and 0 0.81? Okay, now don't do mental sum, all right? Especially when there are decimals, you will need to show out your working so that you don't make mistakes. Put a zero in the blank space, and then you add them together. So two plus eight is 10, carry one. Bring down the decimal point, one plus four is five and four. So you have 45.01. So what is the digits in the tender? This is your tender place, okay? Your tender. So the digit zero is in the tens place. Okay, understand? So what, what place is this? This is your ones, okay? The five is in the ones place, and this will be your tens, okay? Your whole number, tens. And then the digit one will be your uh, hundred. Okay, there's a TH. So every time you see there's a TH, uh, you have a decimal already. And of course, the zero is in the tender. Okay, got it? Okay, question number six. Ahmad, Braden, and Kelly share a packet of candies in the ratio two is to three is to four. Kelly had 24 candies. How many candies were there in the packet? Now, if you are using ratio method, what is ratio method? It means that you have to write out your ratio. This is called something like ratio method. All right, ratio is actually a method that can use to solve many kinds of problems. So when you're using ratio method, you need to label. So you have two unit, it's a three, is to four. And there is a total. There must be a total in your ratio, which is how many? Uh, nine units altogether. So Kelly had 24 candies. So you have to put two unit. All right, all the ratio, they are all called units. So your two units is uh, oh, sorry, four units, huh? Miss Thomas wrongly. So Kelly has four units. So four units is equal to 24. Then your one unit will be 24 divided by four, which is six. So all together, how many candies? There are nine units. So nine times six, 54. So your answer is number two. Okay, simple. So until now, there should not be any mistake, hopefully, because they are quite easy. Okay, let's go to number seven. Line graph, you need to put the numbers on the line graph. So 2014, they are 150. And how do you get 150? You have to count the gaps. And how do you count the gaps? You count one, two. So there are two gaps. How big is two gaps? You take 300 minus zero. So two gaps is 300. Then one gap will be 300 divided by two. So one gap is 150. And then put the numbers on the line graph. So 2015 will be 300. 2016 will be 600 plus 150, 750, and then you have 900, and then 1,200. Okay, yep, that's the first thing you do. And then you look at the question, how many members were there in 2016? I think that's quite easy to recognize. So answer number two. Okay, all right, the next question, uh, that's where I think some of you don't know how to, uh, how to get the answer, right? So between which two years was there a 100% increase? Okay, so you have to look at two years. One, you have to look at consecutive years at a time. What do you mean by consecutive years? Start from 2014 to 2015. Okay, start from, uh, start from 14 to 15. What is the increase? The increase is 150. Right, from 150 become 300. That's an increase of 150. So how do you get a percentage increase? Get your fraction. Okay, those in my group, you have to know how to get your percentage increase. You need to get your fraction. So your numerator is the increase, and the denominator is where you start from before you increase. So you start from 150 before you increase. So how many percent is this? So you multiply by 100%. Okay, and how many percent is that? Uh, I think it's very easy to see, right? So that is 100%. Increase, right? 100% increase. So which two years has 100% increase? So you have from 2014 and 2015. So you are lucky. 
So number one is the answer already. Okay, but I want to I want to find I want to make another I want to get uh take another example okay to, to show you how to get the increase. Okay, for example, if I want to find the increase from 2015 to 2016. So how do you get the increase? Now you go and find what is the increase, which is 750 minus 300. So what is the increase or how many percent increase? Then what do you do? Write as a fraction. The numerator is the increase and the denominator is where you start before you increase. So the, the denominator is the number that you start first. Okay. So we are looking at 2015 to 2016 to find how many percent increase. So I got my fraction already. Then how do I get the percentage increase? You can make the denominator 100, right? So divide by 3, divide by 3, I get 150 over 100, and it is 150% increase, which is not what we want. Okay, all right, so there are two ways to get your percentage increase. The first way is to make the denominator 100. The second way is to times 100%. So you have two methods or two ways to get percentage, right, to get your percentage. Okay, let's go to the next one. Question number eight done already. So let's go to question nine. Okay, question nine, uh, there's, there's a question error. I don't know whether you can do or not, but I can't do because question three and four, uh, there is no answer there, right? You cannot find any line of symmetry. So this question we skip, right? So we skip. Okay, let's go to the next one. Uh, Mr. Ong. Yeah, one rate. For the question nine, the number three that is online here. Is it? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, okay. I thought there was no mistake. <laughs> I thought there was a mistake. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. There's a lot of symmetry. Yes. Okay. Okay. Sorry. So, Mr. Long, yeah, there's a lot of symmetry. Yeah. Okay. So, your answer should be number four. So, number four has no line of symmetry. All right. Number four, no matter how you look at it, uh, there, is, there is no line of symmetry. Okay. So, so answer number four. Okay, so question, question number nine, you can do. So question three, there is a line of symmetry. And question one and two is given to you already. Okay, the line of symmetry is actually given to you. So yeah, so, so it's actually a gift. Yeah, so it's, the answers are partially given to you. Okay, let's go to the next one. Okay, question 10. Okay, the solid is made of identical unique cubes. So which of the following shows the front view of the solid? So how do you find the front view? You look, at this way, okay. Look, this is how you how you find the how you recognize the front view. Two squares, okay. Two squares on the left column, another two square, all right, and one square. So you have two two one. So look for something that's two two one. This is three two one. This is two two one one, which is not what we want. And the next one will be two two one. That's that's the front view. Okay, do you understand how to get the front view? All right, so you look at the front and then you look at the same column. There's two squares in the same column, another two squares in another column, and then there's one square by itself. So two, two, one. Okay, that's how you, that's how you recognize the front view. Okay, number four, no need to see already. So number four, we skip. Okay, let's go to the next one. Question 11. Question 11, uh, there is a missing, okay, there's a missing question. So we will skip that because you can't find that question 11 in the exam papers. I think something, something is missing in that paper. Okay, number 12. Peter is 13 years old now. His father is three times as old as he. So if Peter is 15 years, the father is three times 15, which is 45 years. So what is their total age in five years time? Right, so what do you do? You have to take the father's age plus five years later, which is 50. And you also have to look at Peter, which is 15 years now, plus another five years also. So Peter is going to be 20, uh, 50, 45 plus 50, 45 plus, let me see, uh, 45 plus. Uh, Mr. Oh, Ong is 13 Yeah, yeah, Mr. Ong saw something, yes. Okay, let me just rewrite again. So 45 plus five is uh, 60. And then Peter's, is, Peter's age is, 13, why do I keep writing? <laughs> why do I keep writing? Okay, hang on for a while. Mr. make a mistake. Hang on for a while first, okay? Let me rewrite again. So Peter is 13 years old now. Ah, what am I doing? 13 times three, which is 39. So the father is three times of Peter, all right? So if Peter is 13 years now, you have to add another five years for him. So Peter will be 18 years in five years time. And the father is 39 years now. You add another five years later, 
So the father will be 44 years in five years' time. Okay, agree? <laughs> All right, something very simple. And then you add them together to find their total age in five years' time. So the answer is 62 years. So answer number four. All right. <laughs> okay. All right, let's go to number 13. Okay, number 13. Uh, okay. <laughs> keep... Wait, wait, wait. I haven't done it. Yeah, Karina, hurry, Karina. <laughs> okay, anyone needs any uh, any clarification? Everybody all understand, right? Okay, you okay, understand, you okay? Okay, so if you need any cl clarification, you ju just raise your hand. Okay, the, the lesson is for everybody today. All right, it's, it's a paper one lesson. Okay, question 13. Now, question 13, uh, some of you can't do because of the language. You may not understand what it means. Uh, Jeff and three of his classmates got an average of 80 marks. So every time you see average, you can find the total, all right, total. So let me just draw a simple average model. So everybody is 80. So you can find the total. What's the total? You take 80 times four, which is 320, right? And if, ah, uh, there's a word if there. If means what? If means not the real score. If means hasn't happened yet. So if Jeff has scored 79 marks, their average score will have been 83 marks. So you have, an, uh, uh, you have another total, you have a big total, a bigger total. Why is there a bigger total? Because their average has increased. Why did the average increase? Because if, right, if Jeff has scored 79 marks, what will happen? Their average score will become bigger, right? Okay, so what do you do? Can you find the total? So even if you can't get the answer, you at least find the total when you have average. So 83 times four, you do your working and you will get 332 marks. Okay, so what's the increase? What's the increase? There's an increase of 332 minus 320. There's an increase of 12 marks. But did Jeff really score 79 marks? <laughs> Is it true that everyone average is 83? Not true, right? So Jeff did not score 79 marks. So what must you do to get his real marks? You have to minus 12. Okay, you have to minus 12 to get his actual score. So what is his actual score? 67. So answer number one. Do you understand? If means what? If means that is not his real score. So you have to find his actual score. And how do you do that? You have to minus, right? Minus away the increase, minus away the 12 marks to get the actual score. All right. Okay, let's go on to question 14. All right, question 14. If you're confused by the percentage, then what do you do? Change the percentage to fraction. 40% is 40 out of 100 and simplest form, two fifth. So change the percentage to two fifth and draw model. Okay, the matter is model. So, Madam Kaisa sold 120 cupcakes in the morning and two fifths of the remainder. So, how do you draw the first sentence? You cut the first part, which is one to zero in the morning, and the remainder is the right side, and you will need to cut the remainder into five, five boxes, which I hope you know how to do that. Okay, and two boxes are sold in the afternoon. So, label afternoon. And the rest of the remainder must be the left. Okay, the left. So this is the left. So the number of cupcakes left in the end was one third of what she had at first. So how do you draw? Uh, how do you draw the next sentence? What is one third talking about? One third is talking about all the cupcakes at first. So can you cut this entire rectangle, which is all the cupcakes at first, into three boxes? You cannot, right? So what do you do? You drop down the same rectangle. Okay, drop down the same model, which is all the cupcakes at first, and then cut into three boxes. But before you do that, make sure this is your left, your left, which is one third. Okay, one third. So if there's a one third, then over here must be two, right? Two third, right? Two third. So one third, right? Okay, so what do you do? Now, all these are called units, all right? And how many units are left at the bottom? So you have three units left also at the bottom. So every big box, every big box that you see below must be the same. Am I correct? Okay, clear? 
All right, so how many cupcakes were sold in the afternoon? So can we find question mark over here? So how do we find? Can find ready. You look at the model, you can see that below there are nine units minus five units. Okay, there are five units. So nine units below minus five units on top, you get four units. Yep, so four units is one, two, zero. And your one unit is one, two, zero divided by four. So one unit is 30. So how many cupcakes were sold in the afternoon, which is two units. So 30 times two, 60. So you have 60 cupcakes sold in the afternoon. So if you don't know how to do your model, okay, your model, change the percentage into fraction. And then when there's fraction, model drawing. Okay, otherwise quite hard to solve lah, if you don't know how to do. Okay, question 15, this is the one. Okay, question 15 is the one, huh? the one that I think most of us may not be able to know how to do this. Okay, copy down quickly. Okay, question 15, ready? Okay, this is under rates. Okay, the topic on rates, but it's the harder kind, all right? It's something that's a bit harder. Some students are folding paper cranes during your craft lesson. In nine minutes, five students can fold 10 paper cranes. All right, so you write down five students can uh, take 10 minutes, uh, nine minutes. Okay, five students take nine minutes to fold 10 paper cranes. Okay, this is what you can write. All right, it's rates. Okay, before we continue, we just to tell you something. Okay, if there are more students, okay, if there are more students, what will happen? Do you take more time to, to do something or less time to do something if there are more students? If there are more students, okay, listen carefully, you will take lesser time to do something because more hands. More hands means less time. If there are less students, you will take more time, right? More time to do something. And also, if there are more students, you will produce more paper crane. If there are lesser students, you produce lesser paper crane. So do you understand the logic? Okay, one more time. If there are more students, you take lesser time to do something. Okay, lesser time. If you have less student, you have you take more time. Okay, more time to do something. And also, if there are more students, you produce more paper cranes. If there are less students, you produce less paper cranes. Okay, so this is the idea, this is the concept. Okay, so we are supposed to find how long does it take for three students, okay, to produce 54 paper cranes. Okay, so how do we do this? Okay, very simple. Okay, look at the five students. Five students take nine minutes. So one student, is it five divided by five and nine divided by five? Is it nine divided by five to get, to get, to get one, one point something minute? No, one student will take more time to fold 10 paper cranes. Agree? Because you only have one student, so you will take more time. So if I divide by five is one, then over here, you will have to do what? You will have to times, times five. You will get 45 minutes, okay? So one student will take 45 minutes to fold 10 paper cranes. So your job is to try to reach your job is to try to get three students, try to become three students. So how do we do that? Well, three students will take how long? Okay, three students. Three students will take, if one student take 45 minutes, then three students will take more time or less time? Less time. So if over here you times three, then the other side you will have to divide by three, which is 15 minutes. All right, so three students will take 15 minutes to do what? to fold 10 paper cranes. Agree? Okay, understand, huh? Okay, so I, I, have, I got three students already. Wow, three students already. So now I need to make the 10 paper cranes into 54 paper cranes. Okay, so what do I do? Okay, I'm gonna use a different color. Three students will, will take how long to fold how many paper cranes? So I have to, I have to, I have to come to 54, right? So how do I come to 54? I divide by five, 15 minutes divided by five, I get three minutes. And then 10 paper cranes divided by five, I get two paper cranes. Okay, got it? Right, 15 divided by five, you get three minutes to fold two paper cranes. Yeah, okay. And then what do I do next? Then I can jump already. So two times what equal 54? two times 
27 is 54. And 3 times 27 will be 81 minutes. So three students will take 81 minutes to fold 54 paper cranes. So your answer is what? Your answer is 81 minutes. Okay, not, e not easy, uh, but what's the concept here? The concept here is more students, less time, less time. Less student, more time to do something. Okay, that's a concept. Okay. And of course, if you have more time, you produce more paper crane. If you have lesser time, you produce lesser paper crane. That's what you see in this in these steps. Okay, more time, more paper cranes. Less time, you produce less paper crane. Agree? Okay, all right. Any questions so far? Okay, if there's any question after the lesson, okay, then you stay back and then I will explain again. Okay, anyone get the answer correct for question 15? Anybody? Question 15? Only Yoke and some others. Oh, okay, no lucky guess. Like, doesn't mean you get a lucky guess, you raise your hand. Lucky guess means consider as don't know how to do. All right, you must get the answer correct because you know how to do. Okay, let's go to the, yeah, uh, let's go to the next one. Okay, we are right on time. I think we can end before 9 p.m. <laughs> okay, question number 16. Mr. Tan sold his car for $163,458. So how do you round off to the nearest thousand? Draw a line uh, to show the last three digits. Why do you show the last three digits? Because nearest thousand, thousand got three zeros. So you show the last three digits, okay? And then look at the digit nearest the line. Okay, the digit nearest the line, is it five or bigger? Nope. So you don't add one. So it's still 163,000. So your answer is $163,000. Okay, so easy. So don't lose your marks because of this simple question. 163. Sorry, say again. Can I write 163? Huh? You write 163? <clears throat> the answer then is very wrong already. Leh. Very different already. Because you're asked nearest thousand. Your answer must have thousand. How many thousand? Okay. If the question say nearest hundreds, then your answer must have how many hundreds? Do you understand? Must have how many, over here must have how many thousand. So 163, no thousand inside. So no, so it's wrong. Okay, let's go to number 17. Uh, AFC and BFE are straight line. Find angle CFD. All right, so where's your CFD? C, F, and D. So you're supposed to find this angle. Okay, uh, every time you see straight lines, look for X, okay? X like this. Okay, and there's a right angle that's 90. So why look for X? Because vertically opposite angles are the same, are equal. So you take 118 minus 90. So your question mark is 28 degrees. Got it? All right. Okay, let's go to question 18. Question 18, oh, this one is uh, quite interesting. <laughs> okay, now Shan Shan counted a total of 50 sheep and chicken all together and, uh, and then fill in the table. So what do you see? 24 legs belong to the chickens. So how many chickens are there? 24 divided by two, that'll be 12 chickens. And then how many sheep? You take 50 minus 12, that will be 38 sheep. And how many sheep legs? 38 times four, <laughs> 38 times four, and uh, do your working, okay? I'm, I'm gonna skip the working. So 38 times four, what do you get? So you will get uh, 38 times four, you will get, 152. So your answer are all this. Okay, so the only problem will be you don't know how many legs does a sheep have. <laughs> then that will be a, a big problem already. So you must know how many, how many legs a sheep has, how many legs a chicken has. Okay, question 19. Stella had M dollars. She spent two fifths of it, two fifths of it at the, at the bush shop. So how much money had she left? Okay, so what do you do? Now, uh, this is a one mark question. So you may not know how to do, but it's because it's a one mark, so there must be something very simple about this problem. So what do you do? One hole, one hole is all the money. When you spend two fifth, that will give you three fifth of the money left. Okay, right? That's a, that's a family of fractions. So three fifth is the money left. So how much is the money left? Three fifth of the money left is times, of is times, remember? And times what? Times how much you have times the money that Stella had. So three fifth times M. And what do you do? Change the, change, the, change the M into a fraction. And then you multiply the numerator, three times M, and then five times one. So what is the money left? Three M over five. 
and that's how you get your answer. So the money is 3M out of 5, and, uh, and then bracket, uh, bracket dollar sign. Yes, one way, question? I yeah. put M minus 2 fifth. N minus 1? N, N minus 2 fifth. You, if you put N minus 2 fifth, that's wrong. Because why? 2 fifth is not the money. 2 fifth is the representation. It's a representation. It's not the money. Okay, so you have to find how much is the money, right? So how do you find how much is the money spent? You take two fifth of the money times M. So how much is the money spent? She spent two M over five. That is the money she spent. <laughs> okay, you cannot take M minus two fifth. Two fifth is the representation. Right? It's, it's not the real money. Okay, so Wenrei, do you understand? Mm. Yeah. Okay. okay, let's go on to the next one. Okay, question 20. Okay, this one also not, not hard. So how do you count the cubes? There's a shortcut. Look at the column and count the cubes by the column. So every column has five cubes. Then here five, here five, and then in the middle got four. So they are all together 24 cubes. Uh, if you put your answer as 24, then you're very wrong because the question asks you to find volume. So you're lucky. You're lucky that it's not a paper, not a paper too. Uh, there's a unique sign given. So you put 24 still, okay, still full marks. But if there's no, uh, if it's a paper two and you put 24, that is wrong already because that is how many cubes. So how do you find the volume? You have to find the volume of one cube and then multiply by 24. Right, so the volume of the whole figure is 24 cm cube. So you must know the difference. This answer and this answer very different. Okay, they are very different. Okay, 24 is how many? 24 cm cube is volume. Okay, the question may ask you to find how many cubes. The question may also ask you to find the volume. So don't write wrongly. Okay, let's go to the next one. Question 21. Okay, uh, those of you who got this answer wrong, uh, you, you're going to cut your head already because you should know how to do this. One method, okay, one method, speed model. Okay, you should know how to draw the speed model by now. Jack took half an hour to walk three kilometers at the speed of six kilometers per hour and one and a half hour to walk another six kilometers at the speed of four kilometers per hour. So what was the average speed for the whole journey? So how do you draw... The problem, Jack starting here. Jack is here, starting point, and he move. All right, he start traveling. There's one part or the first part, and then after that he walk another. So there's a another part. So this is called a two part journey. Okay, you should know already. Two part journey, one part journey, two part journey. Then what do you do? Every part of the journey has a family. Speed, distance, and time. Speed, distance, and time, and there's a boss family. Okay, the the, the overall, okay, the family that, that, uh, that's in charge of everything. Okay, so what do you do next? Then you put the numbers inside. Uh, Jack took half an hour, so put inside, no solving. You can see that I'm not solving, draw and then put numbers inside. And the distance is three kilometer. And the, and the Jack took half an hour to walk three kilometer at a speed, at the speed of six kilometer per hour. So make sure you put at the right place. And he took one and a half hour to walk another six kilometer at the speed of four kilometers per hour. So what was the average speed for the whole journey? Okay, did anybody, I hope nobody, okay, I hope nobody, did anybody go and take six kilometer per hour plus four kilometer per hour become 10 kilometer per hour? Or you go and divide by two or so. Did anybody go and plus and then divide by two? Miss Song say cannot already, huh? so you can't do that. So how do you find the average speed for the whole journey? You have to find the total time. Half an hour plus one and a half hour is two hour. What's the total distance? Nine kilometer. Then you can find the speed already. So speed is equal to distance divided by time. So nine divided by two, 4.5. So the average speed for the whole journey is 4.5 kilometer per hour. So you cannot. Okay, you cannot take six kilometer per hour plus four kilometer per hour and then divide by two. It's wrong. Zero marks. <laughs> okay, got it? Okay, let's go to the next one. Question number 22. Okay, model drawing. How do you know it's model drawing? Because it's a before and after problem. Katie had 28 more cards than Raja at first. Then Raj gave 12 of his cards to Katie. In the end, Katie had three times as many cards as Raj. 
So how many cards did Raj have at first? So when there is a before and after problem, you have two methods, model or table method. So what's, uh, so don't, don't draw table. Don't use table if the model is easy to draw. Okay, now somebody check. Okay, let me check. I'm not done with question 21. <laughs> okay, okay. Let's wait for Abigail. Okay, uh, quickly copy down. All right, copy down. Then we will go down later. Okay, take a little rest. Okay, a little rest while we wait for some of you to copy down. Are you clear with the lesson so far? Is the lesson easy to understand? Okay, easy, huh? So um, don't make the same mistake, lah, okay? Whatever mistakes you make, uh, you should be making new mistakes and not old mistakes. Okay, Abigail, are you done ready? Hmm, where's Abigail? The uh, Miss Hong can't see, there are so many of you here. <laughs> okay, Abigail, done ready? Copy done ready? Okay, then let's go to question 22. Okay, model drawing. All right, now again, like speed model, we don't think about how to solve, we draw. Draw already, then you think about how to solve. Okay, so how do you draw this problem? KT, okay, KT had 28 more cards than Raj. So you draw a comparison model, okay? And this is your 28 more. Then Raj gave 12, so cut here. And by the way, I can put the before and after separately, or I can join them together. So up to you, you can merge the, you can put them together or you can join them together. So I'm going to join them together. Okay, so what happened after Raj gave 12 cards to Katie, then Katie will get 12 cards right over here. Why invisible box? Because Katie is going to get it, but hasn't gotten yet. Okay, right? Okay, then how does the after model looks like? It will look like this, the after model. This is the after model. Okay, all right. Then what happened in the end? In the end, KT had three units or three times and uh, Raj has one unit. This is how you draw out the sentences, one at a time, right? You don't try to draw everything in one shot. Model drawing is when you draw one sentence at a time until you finish the whole problem. That is called model drawing, okay? All right, so how many cards did Raj have at first? So question mark, can you solve already? Yeah, can you solve already, right? So you just cut here, one unit, cut here, 12 and then in the middle is 28. Okay, then what do you do next? Then you compare. Model drawing is about comparing. So compare the units. This is two units. Then you have two units equal 12 plus 28 plus 12. That will give you 52. And then you find one unit, which is 26. And then how do you find Raj? So 26 plus 12. So Raj has how many at first? 38. So if you can draw a good model, the steps are very fast. And sometimes don't even have any steps sometimes if your model is very good. Okay. Okay, can we go on to question 23? Okay, so keep focusing on the model. Don't use table method. Mr. Wu won't advise table method because if, if it's a simple model, you should try to use model because sometimes when you use table, it can be more complicated. When do you use table? When for paper two, right? Paper two, when it's a bit harder to draw, then paper two, you use table. Okay, question 23, let's move on. Okay, question 23. Okay, now uh, angles, you need to do something first. You need to put down the directions, north, south, West, East, and don't look at the students uh, drawing uh, because sometimes the student also has mistake. So Northeast, here Southeast, and then here Southwest and Northwest. And then read the question. In which direction is the hospital from? So you're supposed to start from the school, okay? And then go to the hospital. So you point the arrow to the hospital. And what direction is that? Northeast, all right? You can see clearly, by looking at the compass, same direction. So that direction is northeast. Okay. And how about part B? J Kai was walking along road J. Okay, he was walking here. He could be walking like that. He could be walking like that. We don't know. We can never say clearly. When he turned into another road, he walked, he faced southeast. So where is your southeast? Southeast is here. Southeast. So look for a road that is pointing that direction, which is road H. So he must have turned into road H, which is pointing to southeast. So answer road H. Okay, got it? Okay, let's go to the next one. Okay, this one, algebra, very simple also. You add up all the sides to find the parameter. Okay, let's do carefully, okay? This one, not very hard. Add up all the Ks. 2K, 3K, 4K, 5K, 
and 7K. So there are seven Ks, right? And then add the whole numbers, two plus one, three, four, five, and eight. So is your answer 7K plus eight CM, and which is a parameter? Am I correct? 7K plus eight, right? Okay. Okay, let me just double check. Huh? Miss Tong has the answer key. Hey, oh, Miss Tong got something. Did I see? Oh, ah, there's a one, there's a one CM here. <laughs> there's a one CM there. So plus one more, nine. Okay, nine. So 7K plus nine. Okay, 7K plus nine. So don't miss out any number. So your answer is 7K plus nine. So what do you do? You add up all the Ks. Add up all the Ks, and then you add up all the whole numbers. You will get 7K plus nine. Okay, let's go to question 25. Okay, ah, this one. This tests your concept on how to find circumference. So find the parameter of the figure, and there are three identical quarter circles, and there's a square of side 7 cm. Now, your, your picture cannot be very clean. So put something on the pictures there. All right, and what's the radius of the, of the quarter circle? 7, right? 7 cm. All right, so how do, you, how do we find the parameter of the figure? You have to find the circumference of the three-quarter circle, and then you have to add the straight line. So can you see what I'm doing? Parameter is what? Parameter means you have to, you have to find the side. How long is this circumference? And then add the two lines together. Okay, that's parameter. All right, so let's do one by one. So how do we find the circumference of the three-quarter circle? Okay, revise. Okay, revise. Start with the fraction first. Put the three quarter in front and the formula behind. Do this, do this, and you will never get confused and you will not make any careless mistake. So three quarter times pi, which is 22 over seven. And what's the diameter? You look at the picture, there's only a radius. How to get diameter? Take the radius times two. So seven times two, 14. Okay, all right, no calculator. You have to do fast. You have to cancel to do fast divided by seven, 14 divided by seven, right? And then four divided by two is two, and uh, 22 divided by two is 11, and then two divided by two is one, and then two divided by two is also one. So you cancel to make the number smaller so they can do faster. Three times 11 times one, that will be 33. And then one times one times one, that will be one. So what's the circumference of the three quarter circle? 33 cm. Okay, that's not the answer yet because you will need to add the straight lines. So plus seven plus another seven. So the parameter is how many? 47 centimeter. Okay, understand? Okay, all right, let's go to the next one. Question number 26, ratio method or model drawing, which one you like. So you like model, you draw model, you like ratio, you do ratio. So ratio is faster than model. So let's do ratio. Okay, how do you do ratio? You will need to arrow point. Same, when you draw model, you have to, you have to arrow point. The numerator points to the first person, denominator points to second person, and draw a model or write a ratio. So you decide, four is to seven. And then do the same thing for Matthew. Matthew mass is five over eight of Jake's mass. Numerator points to the first one, denominator points to the second one. So write your ratio. All right, so Matthew is to Jade, which is five is to eight. Okay, then compare the two ratios. What is the same? You have uh, Jake and Jake, same person, but different numbers. So you have to make equal. So you get eight is to 14. And here is still unchanged, right? Unchanged. So once you make Jake to have equal numbers already, you can call them all units. Okay, this is called ratio, ratio method. All right, ratio is a big method, can be used to solve many, uh, many kinds of problems also. So what is the ratio of Jake's mass to Lionel's mass to Matthew's mass? So Jake is eight to Lionel to Matthew. So eight is to 14 is to five. So do I want to draw a model for this problem? Uh, Ms. Tong prefer you to draw, to use ratio. Ratio is faster. When you draw a model, it takes a more time. So ratio is much faster. Okay, question 27. All right, question 27. Okay, let's go to 27. Okay. Okay, uh, okay this, one, this is quite easy as well. Mr. Arnold, I'm not done copying. Okay, okay, let's, let's go, back, go back to the previous one. Okay, don't worry, I will let you have time to copy. We have a lot of time today. Okay, once you're done, tell me. Uh, 
Okay, so far, so far, everybody, do you have a lot of mistakes? <laughs> okay, Michelle, understand, Michelle? Michelle. Okay, Michelle, you understand? Okay, let's move on already. Okay, let's go to question 27. Okay, the pie chart shows three types of vehicles and there were 15 motorcycles. So let's put down 15 and, uh, and then look at the table. More than half the vehicles were cars. I think very easy to, to see, right? So the answer is true, right? Because you can see the, the cars is more than half the pie chart, right? It's already more than half the pie chart already. Now there were 10 more motorcycles than vans. Uh, this one, we are not sure. There could be 20 more, 30 more, we don't know. So this one, very easy, okay? So in the prelim exam, Okay, now I don't think you'll get something like this. In the pretty exam, usually it will be a bit harder. So this one is a bit too easy, too obvious. Okay, so be prepared for, for, for harder questions for this kind of problem. Okay, let's go to question 28. Okay, in the figure, EFGH is a parallelogram. Okay, before you start solving, you need to show the arrow heads. Very important because there are important properties when there are arrow heads. All right, show the arrow heads. And not only that, show the equal side, equal side, because there is, then you will see isosceles triangle. And then last thing to do is put the question mark, E, H, J, which is over here. Put the question mark. Do all this before you solve. Okay, once you've done all that already, then look for easy angles. So there are two angles that are equal because they are in the isosceles triangle. Okay, this side and this side, they are equal. All right, so can we find this angle here? So you take 180 minus 75 minus 75. This angle here is 30. Okay, then what else can we do? Whenever there are parallel lines, look for Z. Okay, look for Z or look for F. Okay, F. So there are two letters you should look out for, Z or F. When you see lines, they are parallel. Okay, so do you see any line that's parallel? Yes. Okay, so you have two lines parallel, there's a Z. This is 45 degrees. This whole thing is also 45 degrees. So you minus 30 and you get the question mark, which is 15. So your question mark is how big? Your question mark is 15 degrees. Got it? Understand? Okay, so do all this marking. So how to do well for exam? Put all the markings there. All right, so the, 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 your picture cannot be very clean, right? The more things on your picture, the more clear. The more clear you will get and able to solve faster. Yeah, Caleb? Uh, must you, is it a must to use the Z here? Use the what? The Z. Is it a must to use a Z? If you have a different way of getting the answer, then it's also correct. So there are a few ways to get your answer, la, a few ways. Okay, we'll just show you this way. La. Okay, we always try to get the easy, always try to go by the easiest way. Okay? All right, question 29. Next one, last two already. Okay, this one. The... <laughs> The last few questions is always the hardest, right, in the exam. Now, the figure is made of four identical right angle triangles. The shorter side of each triangle is 6 cm, and the parameter of each triangle is 32 cm. Find the parameter of the figure. Now, no matter how hard you think the question is, it is not actually very hard uh, because we are still premise 6, right? How hard can it be for premise 6? It's, there's always something quite simple, even though you look at it, it looks quite hard, but there's always something after you heard the lesson, eh, actually it's quite easy. So if you look at the figure, the parameter of each triangle is 32. Look at what I'm doing. Okay, that's a triangle. What's the parameter? 32 cm. Okay, and your picture cannot be very clean. The shorter side is 6 cm, okay, 6 cm. So I want you to tell me, if I take the, if I take the parameter of the triangle and I, and I, and I what? And I, and I, and I cut away and I remove this one, remove this one, okay, remove this, okay, remove this, and also, uh, okay, remove this, uh, okay, and then this one. Okay, what do you think? So what do you think is the, what do you think, how long is that red line? The red line that you see. <laughs> How long is the red line that you see? If I remove that, that no, I remove that. Okay, just now what did I do? I did something like this, right? Look carefully, uh, I'm showing you by colors. The parameter of this triangle is 32, right? So what happened if I remove this and I also remove this? So can you tell me how long is the two red lines? How 32, long is the two? 32 minus six minus six. Yeah. 
Okay, 32 minus 6, minus 6, and uh, what do you get? I think you get 20, right? 20, 20. Yeah, 20. And then, <laughs> and then, then, the rest already, what? then you can find the parameter of the whole figure already. Yeah, so you 20, so, times, 20 times 4. Yeah, 20 times 4. Another one, okay. And then there's another similar one here. See, I'm using different colors. And then there's another, another one. Yeah, so what's the parameter of this figure? 20 times 4. So you see, uh, in the PSRE exam, yeah, there will be questions, uh, they are hard. But, but you must understand, okay, we are still primary school, we are all in primary school. So how hard can it be? Just that your mind has to think, no, just, no, it's not really hard because after you look at the lesson, you realize that, eh, actually not very hard, la. <laughs> not very hard, you see? Okay, so, so try your best, okay? Don't, don't give up and uh, always try to see what you can do, right? Do simple steps. Even if you can't get the answer, do the simple steps. Okay, you may get some meta marks. Okay, the last question already. Okay, question 30. Okay, question 30, this is a very common question and you should not make mistakes, those of you in my groups. All right, I hope you didn't, don't make any mistakes here. Yeah, when we, you still need to copy down? Uh, yeah. Okay, hurry up, last question already. <laughs> okay, we still thought that we may end a bit later, but today I think we are, we are quite early. Okay, done? Okay, now, the last question, uh, uh, you really cannot make mistakes for this, okay? Because you have done it, quite a lot of times already. 11 over 12 meter or string is cut into shorter pieces. Each of the shorter pieces must measure one over six meter long. So what is the length of the remaining piece or how much is the remainder? What is the remainder? Okay, you take the whole string and you cut it into pieces of one over six meter. So you should divide to get how many pieces you can cut. Okay, so how do you divide fractions? Keep change, flip, all right, keep change, flip, and then you cancel, divide by six, and divide by six, you get two. Uh, then you divide by six, you get two, okay? So child divide by six is two. Okay, let me do some changes. Ah, yeah. Okay, hang on for a while. So, so six divided by six is one, and then child divide by six is two. And then what do you get? 11 times one and two times one. Okay, then what do you do with that? <laughs> you have to change it to mixed number, do not change into a decimal because if you change into a decimal, you cannot get the length of the remaining piece. You have to change it to a mixed number, okay? And what does the mixed number tell you? It tells you that there are five pieces, okay, five pieces. And what is the length of the remainder? Is it half? Some of you put down half, which is wrong already. It's not half. So how do you find the remaining? You take half, times how long is one short piece, which is one over six meter. This is the shortcut. Shortcut to get how long is the remainder. So half times one over six, the length of the remaining piece is one over 12 meter. Do you understand? Yeah, I think somebody got a mistake, right? You can put half, right? <laughs> yeah, so please don't do that anymore because we talk about this many times already. This is a shortcut. What is a long cut? Okay, I will show you what's the long cut because uh, to tell you, uh, like some of you, you may have done the long cut to get the same answer. So what is the long cut? The long cut is to take the five pieces that you have found and then you multiply by one over six meter, which is the length of one piece. And you have used five over six meter, right? You have used five over six meters. So what is the length of the leftover? Then you take all the string at first, and then you go and minus how much you have used. And you go and uh, minus and what do you get? So you times two, times two, and you will get one over 12 meter, which is also the same answer, but long cut, long cut. So, so we don't want the long cut. <laughs> okay, so shortcut is better, right? You just Mr. take- Ong, Mr. Ong? Yeah. It's still the same. Both methods still have two steps. Oh, uh, no, no, the, the first one, the red color one is faster. You, you take the half, right? The first one is better. You take the half that you see, and then take the half, and then you go and times how long is one short piece, and you get your answer already. But you look yeah, at the- but just if you want to get half, you must do the, this 11 over, over 12 divided by one over six. So this is considered one step, and then the half times one over six is also another 
Mm. Uh, the step. So it's two steps. Then your blue color method is also blue. Also okay. So okay. Blue well, it's well, if you understand, uh, you just make sure you can get the answer. Okay. Don't, don't, uh, as long as you don't go and put half, like, you put half, you are gone already. Like, put half. <laughs> okay. So just make sure you know how to get the remainder. Okay. Yep. So we are done. We are done with the whole paper. So, how is your total score? Do you get at least 30? Okay, hopefully get at least 30. Yeah. Okay, now the next uh the next paper one, I may want to do a different year. Or I may want to do a 2020, it can be a 2021. So it may not have to be always 2019. Is that, is that speed in the paper? Uh okay, if you are doing the 2020 and 2021, there will be many topics that will not be tested, but the paper will be much harder. Okay, the paper one will be much harder. Uh -huh. Okay, yeah. So, so next next week we will we will we may we may do a different year lah next week. Okay, so not not confirmed yet. Okay, any questions? If there's no question, then you can stay behind. Ask me later. All right. Otherwise, I see you the next week. All right. So all right. So goodbye, and I'll see you the next week. Have a good rest. And uh, the rest of you who need to ask me question, you can stay back. Okay. Bye, uh -huh. Mission. All right. Bye. And all right. And uh, okay. Bye, Lee Wen. And okay. And who need to stay back? All right, then you just stay behind and uh, you can ask me. Okay, so Caleb, got a question to ask me, Caleb? Uh, yeah, can, sorry, can I check question one to four? Because I came in late. Mm, okay, question one to four. Okay, hang on. Uh. Okay, question one to four. Okay, one to four. Question one, the answer is number four. And then question two, the answer is number one. Question three is three. Question four is three. Any mistake? No mistake. Okay, good. How about the others? Wen Ray and uh, Garrett, anything you want to ask? Okay, how about Wen Ray? Uh, any question 21 to 24? Question 21 to 24? Why so many? <laughs> question 21 to 24. Uh, okay, do you copy down? Okay. Okay, question 21 is the speed model. Okay, speed model. Uh, okay, this is the basic model. Okay, the basic. Uh, from this basic model, you draw nicer la, nicer ones for harder questions. Uh, okay. question this is your model method. Okay, model method. 23. Okay, question 23. <clears throat> That's your angles. This one, no method. Okay, no method. Okay, any more? It's not long. Yeah, Caleb? If I write like uh, NE for question. Okay. Uh, uh, is it wrong? Uh, exam, uh, don't do this, okay, exam. <laughs> yeah, I wrote, I wrote NE, but I put on top North East. Uh, okay, in the final answer, you have to put North East. Put yeah, the whole North East on top. Yeah, okay. All right, any more questions? Okay, we're ready. No question, oh. no, no more. How about Caleb, any more? For any question 24. Question 24, okay. Question 24, the answer is uh, 7K plus 9, bracket uh, CM. Question 25, the answer is 47, right? Question 25, uh, Question 25 is your, okay. Okay. Any mis okay, no mistake, right? Okay. All right, so then I'll see you right the next week. And then Caleb and Garrett, any more questions? Uh, no more. Bye-bye. Okay, then I'll see you the next week, all right? So have a bye. good rest. Okay, so goodbye, everybody. See you next bye -bye. week. Yeah, bye-bye. You missed out on one last question. Yeah, Caleb. Uh, is it like the paper two homework on the Saturday? Is it I know? Uh, same paper. Yeah, it's the same paper. Oh, no wonder. Yeah, so you're going to take the paper no, one. The marks won't be the same yeah. So okay, what I'm happened not. is uh, you have to bring your paper one when you come for lesson. And then paper two, you're done already. Add together, see. Then mm. we see the total. Lah, the total marks. Are you going to uh, mark the paper two that we did last yeah, week? Yeah, yeah. Whatever you have done, we have to, I'll be marking plus your paper one also. All right, okay. starting from last week onwards, all the paper one have to hand in to me. Okay, all right. Okay, okay. so you. see you next week. All right, goodbye, okay. everybody. Goodbye, Jared. All right, bye-bye. Okay, bye, Garrett.